my school life. Um, I mean, I was a happy kid. I grew up in Nova Scotia. A nice place, but it was still kind of figuring itself out. I mean, I was black, and I was growing up in Canada. My school life. I mean, again, it was still kind of trying to figure its way out. There was Black History Month in February. Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King. My school life. Again, still trying to figure its way out. White school bells, the new school year. Same books that didn't look like me. A system that was blind. Confused of who I am and who I wanted to be. You're too black, you're not black enough. You're too black. I'm wondering, how many of our students in the classroom feel the same way? How many students in our classrooms truly understand what it means to be a global citizen? Today it's really personal. I believe that us as educators have a responsibility to teach what it means to be culturally responsive. Culturally responsive teaching is something that in line with a system and a framework that allows students to talk about culture, diversity, race, power, <coughs> justice, tolerance. And I get it. All of us in here teach great pedagogy, we're consistently up on technology. We're doing great things in the classroom to help everyone. I want to tell you a story about me and some colleagues. I recently finished my master's around cultural responsive teaching, and I talked to them about implementing this in my classroom. These were some of the responses that I had. And I get it. We are constantly being asked to do more. So why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because some of our students do not see themselves in the books that they are reading. They do not see themselves in the lessons or the activities that we have in the classroom. So what do you do? Tolerance.org is a great place to start. They start with four anchor standards, diversity, diversity, action, power, and justice. As a class this year, we started with identity. And as third graders, you would think, what are they going to come up with with the idea of identity? Over time, we tracked the definition, and it would be amazing to just see how the definition changed over time. We took regular stories that we would read in the classroom, and we asked them, what do you believe this identity of this person, and how is it influencing the other characters We put pictures on the wall. Oh, there we, go. we put pictures on the wall. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Right. We put pictures on the wall of regular people. And we asked students to comment on what did you see. And we're going back. We put pictures on the wall of regular people, and we asked students who are eight and nine years old, what did they see? And these are some of the comments that were made. These comments led to discussions about stereotypes, diversity, prejudices, biases, all at the age of eight and nine. We also talked about questions about identity. And the first thing you see when you look at me is, what do, you, what do you see? What do you notice? My hair. <laughs> so I step in the classroom and the students are very curious. And they ask, Mr. Gray, can I touch your hair? And I often say to them, my hair is very similar to a pillow. I mean, if I wanted to, I could lay down on this and I could probably fall asleep. <laughs> but at the same time, my pillow often does not want to be we tell students, how do you ask questions about someone you're curious about? 
And how do you make that person feel? We wrote poems similar to the one I spoke about earlier, and we took levels that were on the surface level, and we talked more about who you really are. How many of you have, how many of you have cultural competence in your core values at school? How many of you truly teach our students about cultural needs? I believe that us as education system need to start showing mirrors in our classroom of our students. We also need to start feeling comfortable being uncomfortable about the conversation. 